going to start talking as I'm preparing here. Okay. Uh, so this episode is called, this episode, this panel, uh, demonstration, whatever, is called how to, get, yeah, sure. how to Get Ahead in the Klingon Empire. Notice the, the likeful play on words there. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Uh, so, I'm curious, how many of you have ever watched Face Off? On TV. Yeah, oh, I kind of figured. I will. Yeah, it, 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 it's awesome, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so the bit that we're gonna we're like we're gonna talk about the whole process of how to make prosthetic foreheads and things. Well, particularly foreheads because we we're playing on, so that's basically what we do. Uh, but the part we're actually gonna demonstrate is the part that you don't ever see on face up because they've already done it before the guys start, which is how to take a cast of the person's face to make the original clay or the original stone head that they work, they, they sculpt on top of. So, basically, we're going to wrap, he's going to be our victim. Uh, we're going to wrap his head in plaster bandages, and then when we're, when we're not going to do it. I'll happily do it. <laughs> <laughs> then when we're done, we'll have a hollow plaster bandage cast that we can later fill with uh, solid plaster and make one of these, and then we can sculpt in plasticine on top of that and make one of these, uh, and then we put a little framing wall around the edge of it and we pour more plaster over that and we make one of these and then we pour this into it, which is latex, and we make one of these and we add eyebrows and, and we add makeup and eyebrows and we get one of these and then we add a wig and we get one of these. Oh. And that's what you don't see on the face off. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, yeah, they kind of really gloss through the, fraud, the whole process. Right here is good. What I have not, what I should have done in advance is actually cut up a bunch of these bandages. We need a whole lot of them cut out. Get him to do it. Yeah, this is, this is my lovely assistant. assistant. Uh, yeah, we still an important part of this process is that uh, basically, this is like, you know, Bandages, it's like muslin or whatever, some kind of fabric impregnated with bandage, like with uh, plaster dust. Uh, so it's basically it's like they use to make, they, what they, like they used to use to make casts when you broke, broke a bone, they don't anymore. Uh, but these days they still use for crafting purposes. Yep. Um, sell those in my work. Yeah, exactly. They sell it a lot of, like, for almost any art store or craft store, you can get this stuff. Um, and I, I think I paid like I, I went to Michaels and I paid like seventeen dollars for a roll Sounds this size. Right. There are places you can get it cheaper if you look around, but that's about right. Yeah. Uh, try not to pay too much more than that. I remember the very first time I actually did this. I did did this to myself alone in my apartment, which I would really not recommend. It's a bad idea. Uh, but so I actually went to a medical supply place and got medical grade plaster bandages and probably paid twice as much as I had to because they were like, you know, super sterile and stuff. Uh, yeah, you can take over. You can keep doing that. Come uh, in, join us. That's so, enthusiasm. The stuff that they do on Face Off is great, and I would love to be able to do stuff to that level. We're doing the sort of quick and dirty, fan-friendly version. So there's basically, there's two different kinds of, of prosthetics. I mean, there's a number of, but there's two basic kinds. There's slush molded, which basically you end up with something where the outside of it is the shape of your mold, but the inside is just sort of random and a little bit lumpy. Uh, or there's foam cast like this, which is something I picked up at a, they were selling them off at a costume shop, where the outside of it is the shape of your mold and the inside of it is the shape of the original stone head that you, that you uh, the person you were working from. And it's it's full, like it's, it's, it's spongy. So the whole space in between the outside and the inside is full of some sort of material. The advantage of this is that you can, this surface conform, will conform exactly to the person's actual face. So you can glue the whole thing on and it's very light and flexible so it, to a certain extent it will move, like when the person moves their eyebrows, it will move a little bit. Uh, the downside of this stuff is it's quite fragile as you know, like he actually has one of these that mm -hmm. I picked up. Um, and it's, it's, it tears fairly easily. It sweats. Well, there's that, they all sweat. Yes, but that uh, sweats a lot. But <laughs> these ones, these ones are designed like the actual TV shows and movies. For the for the main characters, they use these once each. 
They, 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 they put it on the person, at the end of the day they throw it away, and they make only one for the next day. For the extras, they sometimes reuse them a few times, but they're not designed to be reused, reused an awful lot. Uh, we're a Klingon fan club, I should have introduced myself. I'm Krikor, uh, I'm the local fleet commander for the Klingon assault group, big Klingon fan club. Uh, we have 14 ships in Ontario, uh, lots more across Canada, the US, and around the world. Anyway, we get dressed up a lot, so we want uh, prosthetics will, that will actually stand up to repeat it using uh, wearings. So, you know, we prefer the more the more solid rubber pieces. Can I ask a question about yeah. the slush mold you yeah. said? Uh, is the slush mold something that can be repeatedly used? Well, okay, you, you mean, this is, when we say mold, this is the mold that we're going to end up with. So this yes. can be reused lots and lots of times. The mold itself. The mold itself is yeah. fine, yes, absolutely. Uh, so long as it doesn't break or whatever, it can be used lots of times. And, and yeah, and you can stamp out like multiple copies. You, if, you, if you don't mind everybody in your, your group having the same forehead, you can just make, out, make a whole bunch of them and give everybody one. Um, but yeah, so we, like I said, we want foreheads that'll actually last a while and actually for, for the fans, it's probably, like if you're going to be doing the same thing several times, it's probably easier. And certainly, uh, this, this is the, the actual latex that I use. Uh, and again, it's available from places like Michael's and so on. Uh, and it's, it's designed to make a latex mold over uh, a hard object. Like let's say you've got like a little statue or something, you want to make copies of it. You put the latex over it, and then when it dries, you peel it off, and then you pour plaster or something into that. So it's designed to be used as a mold. We use it as a finished product. Uh, it's, this is a fresh jar, and I don't really want to open it right now because once you unseal it, it starts to degrade. It's like, it'll last like months, but I'm not ready to actually use this one yet, so I don't want to unseal it. But basically, it's, it's quite thick. It, it's like, it, it sort of pours, but very slowly. It's very quick, really gloppy. Um, you go to a makeup store and ask for liquid latex, they will give you a little bottle of very liquidy latex that's designed to be painted onto the skin to do scars and things. Uh, you can use that for this process, but it's, you, have to, you, would, you, know, you have to paint many, many, many layers into this, one layer at a time, and let each layer dry to build up enough thickness to hold the shape. 10 or 15 layers. Oh, yeah, at least. And I mean, what I tend to do, like, if I'm making something that's really bulky, where the ridges are really, really thick, I will occasionally, like, I often sort of pour this in so that it settles into the, 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 the low parts in this, because the low parts in this are the high parts in the original. So you, those are the parts that you want to be thicker. Um, I have even, in some cases, actually take, like, cut little pieces of foam. And like, after I've done a few layers into the cast, I'll take little pieces of foam and just stick it in with more latex, just to sort of help fill up the space. Because theoretically, you want the inside to sort of be nice and smooth and conform to the shape of the person's actual head as much as possible. I mean, it's all, like, like I said, this is kind of a fudgy method, it's all sort of estimating, rather than like trying to do the foam. The other problem with doing this stuff is this stuff is quite toxic when it's actually curing. Mm -hmm. it's, it's more complicated, it's, it's more finicky to actually, like it's usually two or three different like chemicals or whatever that you have to mix together in the right proportions, and if the temperature or the humidity is wrong, it might not set properly. Uh, it gives off toxic fumes, so you have to have like a well-ventilated area with ideally a fume hood or whatever. Um, so there's a number of things about it that make it a little tricky for the beginning costumer to work with. It does end up with a better product, but there are downsides. Um, so how are we doing there? That should be, well, finish, finish doing the, the whole thing and we'll, we'll keep going here. Uh, where did I put the ball came out? Oh yeah. Thank you. Hey, <laughs> Uh, I had a bald cap out. Yeah. So, it's actually, when I say bald cap, this is actually not a bald cap. This is a swim cap that I got from Canadian Tire from the sporting goods section. Um, generally, when you're doing, you know, doing a cast of somebody's head, unless you're specifically trying to do something that involves ears, just cover over the ears because the ears are a really complicated shape to try and cast around, and odds are they're going to break off anyway uh, if you're trying to be doing a whole head that includes ears. So usually I just cover over the ears. So just thin rubber swim cap or something like it. Uh, you can use an actual bald cap from a like a makeup supply place, but they're more expensive than you really need. All you really need is like a thin rubber. Cap. So 
you want to put this on yourself or you want me to? So you'll probably end up with a few wrinkles across the top of the head, but that doesn't matter so much because that's the part that's going to be covered with your clay and your prosthetic when you're actually getting to the sculpting part anyway. What you do want is for it to sit fairly flat across the forehead or anywhere where it sort of crosses over, like, like you know, here, you want it to be fairly flat because that's sort of the edges of where, we're, where the sculpt comes to. So you want it to fit nicely to the sides of the head. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to think of. Okay, I'm gonna have to ask for a favor from somebody. I brought. Uh, I had a. Actually, wait. I might have something in here that will work. I. If you need uh, Vaseline or something greasy to uh, make sure that it doesn't stick to any of his hair. And I had a thing of Vaseline, but I don't know where it went. So if anybody has any like like face like cream myself. or anything like that. That would work really well. I have chapstick. Uh, excuse me, face lotion. Face lotion. Face lotion. Face lotion. Yeah. I have a cocoa butter. Cocoa butter sounds like Sure. Better. And smells nice. Sure. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's good reason. Good. Okay. <laughs> so, can I keep this? Yes. All right, thanks. Cool. You may not want it back in. <laughs> All right. It is just my little makeup kit, but I'm not sure we'll actually get to the makeup part of it. Uh, we we'll sort of have to watch the time here because this process actually takes a little while. So I'm going to try and sort of do my, do my talking at the same time as, I'm, as we're working. Okay. That's one whole roll. We'll, we'll see how far that gets for the back. And if we have to start in the second roll for the front, that's fine. Okay. So starting from the back. Um, actually, before we get into it, just going to scooch forward just a little bit. Yep. Sure. Okay. Do you want to put anything on the back? It's, it's the back is probably more important than the seat because the seat's really covered by you and the smock. True. Anyway. Okay. Sure. Smock, smock. Yeah. Smock. Smock. Does anybody in the front row want to take pictures <laughs> of how fun this is going to be? <laughs> Thank you very much. It's pretty normal. So. Yeah, Gordon Thanks. wants to get documented on this. Well, why not? Yes, indeed. Why not? Indeed. It helps to be clean shaven. Yes. Yep. They don't shave immediately before. <laughs> Uh, yeah. No, I have such a long beard right now. Yeah, no, I know. Yeah, no, it, like, seriously, it's like, uh, it's easiest, like, the easiest cast I did was actually, this guy actually didn't have any hair, so it made it even easier because I didn't have to bother with the cap. Who's that? Uh, who is this? Mm -hmm. uh, his name is Todd Clark. He's currently standing at the steampunk table. Hi, Todd. Um, <laughs> he's currently wearing a steampunk Green Lantern costume. Oh, cool. Uh, oh, I, this, I have a picture of him. Yeah, this over here is this guy here. Hey. Uh, <laughs> what about eyebrows? We'll get that's what the cocoa butter's for. Ah. That's, yeah. So we're gonna do this this mold in two halves. So we're gonna start with the back half, wait till it sets, and then do the front half to overlap it. So that means now I know I was gonna say earlier, the reason I have a lovely assistant is this stuff, as soon as get as soon as it gets wet, it starts the chemical process that that hardens it up. So it'll it'll harden even underwater. Uh, so once my hands get wet, I don't want to be reaching into this pile because the drips of water off my hands will start this stuff setting. Uh, so that's why I have him to keep his hands dry and the individual bandages. While your hands are still dry, let's put the cocoa butter on. Yes, yes. 